guys. Welcome to the day I chose happiness, um, which could also be described as my sort of emotional journey in poker. Uh, this is probably the most, the thing, the piece of upswing content I've been the most excited to create because it, I, I, uh, I really wanted to talk about sort of like my story, but not the story of like, I played the stakes and then I won this tournament and then I moved here and then I did that more of like the like where I was coming from the whole time, like how I was feeling about things, how I got here, you know, sort of to begin with. So, you know, I would sort of say for me, it all started back in, uh, in fourth grade. My, my <clears throat> at the time I did really well in school, um, and then my, I got a, a TV put into my room and uh, in, in fourth grade, and then I would, you know, watch TV late at night, and it would the the I'm very sensitive to the blue light that screens uh, emit, so it would keep me up. And then I got into this like vicious cycle where I was just staying up all night. I would wake wake up super sort of drowsy and tired, and and uh, and I would go to school and I wouldn't be able to focus. And I sort of you know <clears throat> progressively started doing like worse and worse in school, um, and then also started to dislike school more and more because. It, there was, I just spent the majority, the only thing I really liked in school was math and science, everything else I thought was really just like a boring waste of time. Um, but, you know, I didn't, like at, when you're a kid, you, I, like I didn't know any better. So in some level I started to kind of feel bad like about myself that like I wasn't, like I, like I felt like I was supposed to be doing good at school or like that, that, that was important. Um, when in my opinion that really just isn't the case. Like um, really into learning, but I really don't think um, at least sort of, you know, elementary school and stuff was, uh, was really the place, uh, really the place for me to do it. I just, it just wasn't a good environment for me. And, uh, you know, I was mostly bored and, and to sort of compound that I was mostly, I was really tired. I had, I had trouble with my sleep all the way until 2000, and, uh, the end of 2013 when, so, you know, like 10, 10 or so, 10, 15 years, uh, before I figured out, you know, what, um, why I was having to see problems and addressed it. And then that sort of life, life, life ever since then has been actually really good. Um, but yeah, so it's like school started to like sort of go off the rails and then, uh, and I really, I didn't really like it. And what I started to do was I also got a computer when I was a kid. I started playing like video game strategy games. And I also started playing like competitive card games, games called VS system. It's, it's basically, let's just say I played magic the gathering. Um, and I really liked those, like those are really good outlets. Uh, I was always really competitive, and, and yeah, this was just like a good, this was a good place to put it, and you know, my mind gets sort of wrapped up and absorbed in it, and I just, you know, progressively hated school more, with the exception of math, always loved math, um, and then, <clears throat> so basically like, like math and card games, and then didn't, didn't really like much else um, in sports, and didn't really like much else as a kid. Uh, so then, you know, I guess fast forward to my second semester senior year of high school, I, um, you know, I was like just super, like I was going, I was accepted to college, I was going to go to college, but I just wasn't, I needed to do something else. I needed to, I, I was just, I wasn't the type of person that could just go to school and high school and then know anything about themselves or what they wanted to do with their life. Um, so school would have been, was, would have been a, a huge mistake for me. So luckily I ended up finding poker. Um, and uh, so I found, I find poker in high school and my typical day was wake up. And, and this is no joke for, I did this for like two years, two, three years straight. I would wake up, well, <clears throat> um, so I'd wake up before school, sorry, I'm getting totally sidetracked. I'd wake up before school, play an hour before school, go to school, surf like two plus two all day. That was actually how I got started. I deposited 300 bucks on uh, on Bovada and played three tables of full, 25 and L full ring. And I did this because I just sort of found out about two plus two through their books in the Barnes Noble bookstore, one on the website. And found I, f I found out about two things. Two things got me started: play tight and bankroll management. So the smallest game at the time online was that I could play on was twenty five and now. So I just played, you know, the twenty five dollar buy in. I played really tight, and I uh, and I was like very committed to bankroll management. And uh, and then so I yeah, wake up, play before school, surf two plus two all day, come home, uh, play poker until dinner, eat dinner, play poker until I went to sleep, go to sleep, wake up, do the same exact thing every single day until the summer started, in which case I would just wake up, play poker literally all day. Um, and with the exception of like meals and like sometimes I leave the house, but like maybe just to like go get another monitor to put it in my room to play, play more poker with. Um, and I actually, at the time was a grind, but I, I kind of look back on that time very fondly now uh, because like I was just so absorbed and engaged and, and just like I, like I wanted nothing else. Like 
I can't play 12 hours of poker, especially online anymore. I just burn out too quickly. But at the time, I had all this energy and life force, and I like there's nothing else in the world that I wanted to do. Um, so when I look back, like I look back on that time very fondly because I was just so I was just happy. I was just doing what I was doing, and every day was really just a joy. Um, so uh, I go to college later that year, but I'm just still absorbed with poker, and you know I, I wasn't really going to class. I was just playing poker the whole time. Uh, so. I, I started with like 300 bucks at the beginning of that year and the end of the year I had about 17k um, and then I remember I, like I went back I it was on I believe winter break and then I had gone back so this is like early January 2008 and I was just like this is just not gonna happen so I called my dad I met him for lunch or dinner and I was like I just can't I just don't want to do this this just isn't like this just isn't what I want to do uh, I just want I just want to try poker full time so for me, that was like a huge, like, you know, I, like at the time I thought that I was choosing to play poker, but what I didn't realize is that what that day was, was that was actually the day that I chose happiness. That was the day that <clears throat> I sort of finally put myself sort of in control of my own destiny. And, you know, I was like sort of going to be on my own doing my own thing. And I really just like went all in, you know, like I'm 18, I have 17K and I don't know anything about myself or the world, but I'm just like, this just feels like the way to go. So... I, uh, so yeah, I just grind, I just played, you know, all day, every day, and this is the year where I started to make friends in poker, uh, I made a lot, I was really, I mean, again, I was 18, I was young at the time, all my friends were older than me, um, and uh, that was sort of my greatest resource to improving, was just being able to bounce ideas off of them, having, you know, just communication with them, and then, you know, how to play hands and stuff, and I went from 17k and playing 2-4 to, like, 250k and playing 10-20 over the course of the year, so... You know, like an, an unbelievable win. Like I was, I was ecstatic at the end of the year, and I decided, um, uh, I decided that I was going to go to Costa Rica, end of this year and play, you know, playing a poker tournament, um, and or I was, I'm sorry, I wasn't going to play the poker. I was going to go to Costa Rica and just go vacation, hang out on, on the beach. Everyone else was going to go play this poker tournament. It's like a Stars Ugly PT. And then I got there, found out it was landlocked. There's nothing else to do but play this tournament. So I got blackout drunk with some Russian dude. I was 18, and I was like, oh, "Woo! We can we can drink. Let's do this." Um, and Costa Rica, you know, no rules, right? So I got drunk, played the tournament, and chipped it <laughs> with 95% of myself for a cash like 280k. So I mean, I just had like this. I got both. I mean, I like not to take away from like the hardly ridiculous amount of hard work that I did sort of leading up to that year, but then I also just got absurdly lucky to win my first ever live tournament, and, like double my bankroll. So yeah, it's crazy and awesome. Um, uh, it was crazy and awesome. Um, then sort of like went, you know, sort of went along, or like went along my way. Um, so you know, I've. Since I guess since then have been sort of looking for something, uh, or sorry. <clears throat> so like when I look at you know sort of me in poker, I you know I, I think that I really did you know kind of the dream right. Like I got into it. I've been doing it for ten years now. I made a career out of it. Um, I've had a lot of success. I made a lot of money. Uh, but I don't think that that's the criterion for success in poker. Uh, so really, the, I mean, the reason I'm making this video is because I want to communicate something to the mass of people who are sort of on the fence of, you know, they're interested in poker, they like poker, but they're, you know, they're not sure, like, what they should do, should they, should they you know, should they go all in, should they try it, should they, you know, go pro? Um, and I think the answer to that question is definitely yes, and um, the reason is because like there, there, if like there should be no question. Uh, there should be, you know, there should be absolutely no question in your mind. If let's say that you went to school, you you know did whatever your whole life, and then you went to college, you got a degree, and you know you went to graduate school. You're thinking about going to graduate school. You're thinking about getting a job in X, Y, or Z. If that's what you're gonna do, and that you know, like you're sort of setting yourself up for your whole life doing that, you should have no question. You should wake up every day. You. Every day for you should be like that first year, at least on some level for me in poker, where I woke up and I was just like excited to be alive to get to do what I wanted to do, you know, all day every day. Um, if there's like a like a, a doubt somewhere in your mind, I think that you are either not ready to do this college normal job thing, or it's just not for you. Uh, I don't I don't think there are people that. <clears throat> 
that would go on and be really truly successful and happy, um, an emphasis on happy, doing that with sort of a shadow of doubt in their mind. I think that you would, you like, I think in a lot of ways sort of, sort of be doing yourself like a, like a disservice. Um, you know, I think, like, I think that that whole, like, it, I think that the, the going from sort of school to college to a regular job, in my opinion, like, it doesn't, there's a lot of people that need and need and or want to grow, but like because of how, um, it's it's not it's just not enough of a struggle. It's not it's not challenging enough. It's not interesting enough. Um, I think you know depending on what you're doing, uh, like for a lot of people to really really find out who they are or like what they like or what they're about. Um, and I think that in some ways, you know, you could look at that route and think that this is. <clears throat> this is the least risky, you know, way to live your life. When for some of you, I, I think it's actually the most risky. I think never taking a risk is the biggest risk you could really ever take. Um, Peter Thiel actually talks about this. Peter Thiel is one of my all time heroes. Um, for those of you who don't know, he was uh, the first outside investor in Facebook. He's a uh, really, really, really smart guy. Uh, he's a venture capitalist. And he went to Stanford Law and then went to work at some super prestigious law firm in New York. And, um, at some point, like he, but he was just miserable, you know, and it was a situation where everybody on the outside wanted to get in. Everybody wanted to go to the great law school and then work at this, you know, job and like, you know, make this money and do, you know, whatever. But everybody, everybody on the inside wanted to get out. They were miserable. They were just worked to death and, you know, no amount of money can, you know, can make you happy. Um, if what you're doing with your life is unfulfilling or a grind or grueling or whatever it is. So one day he just quit. And I think the story he tells is that he just one day, you know, just left, and his co coworker said, wow, I couldn't, like, I didn't know how to quit. And he was like, yeah, all you have to do is just walk out the front door. It's just that easy. Um, and uh, another, sort of like another story about this is I met uh, I met a friend of a friend who's a, he's a poker player, and he sort of did something very similar. Like, he, he you know, uh, went to a good school and then went to work at Goldman Sachs, you know, the probably the most prestigious investment bank on Wall Street. Um, but he just didn't like it. He was just miserable. It just wasn't like a good life, you know, sort of experience for him. Um, so he quit. He quit to go play. I think he played this like one, two, two, five live or something like that. Uh, and it was, it was like great to get out of like that and then have him go do something like something that he wanted to do something, you know, where he was taking on a lot of responsibility and like a challenge and just like see what would happen. Just like see if you could, if that, like what, what you, what would happen, you know, how, how that would make you grow, where, where that would take your life. Like I think if you if you look at poker as like a money making proposition, uh, yeah, I mean it's it's a for many of you going to be very difficult to make like a ton of money. It, like you know, it might not be the, the the number one thing that you're best at like making a lot of money at. Um, uh, and you know like the <clears throat> games are like it's it's not like as crazy good of an opportunity as it is. So like in terms of like purely making money, it might not be the best idea. But that's not the way that I would look at poker. I would look at poker as like a vessel, an opportunity, an opportunity to challenge yourself and to try to learn about, try to learn about what you like, what you're good at, what you're not good at. Um, and I think that sort of your time spent doing it is is really, really what it is is it's like an it's like an invaluable experience. It's something that you're never going to be able to go to school for or buy. Uh, it, it's something that only you can sort of you know. Just take the risk and do yourself, and then find out, you know, find out where you fit, how where you fit in this world, or how you fit in this world. Um, and so, so the my friend who went to who worked at Goldman, um, he's played poker for a while, and like now he's like knows more about himself, and now um, he's in the process of interviewing for a job at a uh, at like a video game company. Um, I don't want to talk about like what it is. I don't know if he's if he's cool with it or whatever, but he's. He, he's like he's interviewing for uh, a job at a company that has like a super cool vibe stuff that he's really into uh, and that you know he would like wake up and like love to go to work every day and he you know got there sort of through this like journey this vessel of poker um, and I you know and I think there's like a lot of a lot of people in poker that are, like get into poker or casually involved in poker and that's sort of part of what you know part of the reason like why and you know I think it's, it's also good it's like if you feel like you should be there you'll probably be then around a lot of like-minded people especially if there's a lot of people that don't understand where you're coming from your situation you know you're probably like a lot of people were maybe okay with <clears throat> having a normal job or going to school or whatever if you're like this something about this doesn't feel quite right and no one around you you have no one to like sort of uh, explore or expand 
that idea with, but, you know, I think poker, there's a lot of people in poker where that would, um, you know, that would, like, offer you sort of like-minded, like-minded friends to, to grow and, and, you know, sort of bounce ideas off of. Um, so, uh, hang on, I've, I've got my, like, notes over here. So, yeah, I don't know. So, look, so I'll talk real quick about me and upswing. So, you know, I've sort of done everything that I could want to do in poker. Uh, you know, i played, like, the highest stakes. I made a lot of money. I've won... I won a fucking bracelet. I don't know how... <laughs> I won one event this year and won a fucking bracelet. Um, so, <clears throat> like, you know, I obviously still play poker all the time, but, like, I think... I, like, I got put into a situation where I was like, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I was like, am I going to go back to school? Like, you know... Uh, like, like, what, what, what could I do? What should I do? Like, what, what's a good fit? One of the challenging things about it, it about the, I guess, the sort of the poker route is that, um, you know, you sort of become not one of one, but there's very few. There's very, you're sort of like a trailblazer. But in a lot of ways, it's actually a really good thing. Um, so we'll go back to college real quick. So like, here, here's one of the big problems with college, is that, or school in general, is that you. Like, the way the economy works, or if, like, you want to make a lot of money, or you want to be really successful, you want to stand out, is that there has to be, uh, demand has to outstrip supply. In other words, like, there's, I don't know, like, tens, hundreds of thousands of people graduating college every year, millions, I don't know. Um, so, and, like, so your skill, like, what you've learned is not going to be all that much different from what they've learned. Uh, so, in other words, you know, there's a ton of supply of people with your skill set. Whereas if you're an entrepreneur, if you don't go to school, if you, you know, try to get like a cool internship or like you do something where you're learning a valuable skill set where there's not many people, you want to stand out, you want to have a skill set that not many other people have. Um, so, you know, if you think about, let's take upswing, for example, right? The reason that, uh, you know, I think a lot of people have been drawn to upswing and, you know, the lab's been, been great. We've got really like a lot of good feedback if you're interested in like maybe... <clears throat> learning how to play poker, improving, definitely check out the lab, check out our testimonials page. We, we never asked anybody for a testimony. That's just stuff that people just say to us, you know, every, every day, basically. Um, you know, the, the reason that we, the reason that that's, I guess, valuable or people, um, people buy it is because it's one of one. Like there was no, we just like looked at the poker training space and we're like, there's no one has done this. And I don't know if anyone could do, ex like, explain poker in such a way where it's so clear and concise and, and easy to sort of execute and the reason is because you know like again Doug and I are like sort of like one of one or two you know two of two or whatever uh because we've been grinding like our fucking asses off for 10 years trying to become really really good right so that's you know so then we have this skill set as far as like supply goes there's just me and Doug and up to the lab right um and uh and then but for demand there's a lot of people that want to learn you know learn how to play poker uh so you know, this could be, I mean, this could be true sort of in anything. Um, you know, if you are, uh, hmm, I don't know, all the science stuff is like, is obviously, you know, you could be sort of like, I mean, that, that's the stuff that like, I think I find the most interesting. You could, you know, always be on, um, sort of the cutting edge, cutting edge of, um, or like any, I don't know, any new technology, anything involving your phone. Uh, if you became, you know, really valuable or, or like, or content online, um, you know, just sort of like anything where, or it could really be for like any business, um, but anything where it's sort of, it's it's a little bit gray, it's like sort of new, um, and you can put yourself in a position to learn all, like make that your college instead of actually going to college, you would first of all be way more employable because like for us, like let's say, uh, oh, so here, here's an example. So let's say, uh, uh, you know, we wanted somebody to help us do written content, right? I would way, way, way rather hire um uh so our guy our guard our, uh, our written content guy is david huber um he just like loves poker he's you know been involved in it forever he totally gets us he gets what we're doing he like he likes us he likes what we're doing um and he like under he understands where we're coming from he just you know he sort of sent us this letter he's like hey guys like this is what you know you're doing and i think i can help i fit in right here and we, we read that we're like oh my god this guy totally gets it um so we were you know we were happy to bring him on and that was like a great fit Whereas, like, you know, the alternative would be us, you know, I don't know, finding somebody that's involved in poker or maybe just graduated, but, like, graduated from college and played a little, po bit, a little bit of poker. But, like, they might not stand out in any way. They might not get us. They might not, you know, they just might not be a good, like, on paper they might work, um, or, well, work, uh, 
but like you know when it comes to actually getting what we need that you know more kind of more of a crapshoot but you know because david's been involved in industry for a long time he really gets it and he really loves it and he's a good fit and can you know sort of create great written content for us so yeah i think again just like going in like a different sort of path and, and again creating sort of a specialized knowledge for yourself understanding your strengths and sort of going all in on them um I think will A, lead you to be way happier, and B, lead you to like a career or like a, you know, sort of work that you'd really love. Um, so yeah, so for like with us in Upswing, um, I, I wanted an outlet that wasn't poker. Uh, and, you know, I was like sort of like searching, I was like, you know, what should we do? And then me, Doug, and, and sort of the, the third guy involved in Upswing, Matt, uh, you know, I really couldn't think, everyone that I've ever met or everyone I've ever become friends with, I couldn't think of two better guys to start a business with. And, you know, we thought about doing this like Matt sort of floated the idea and then I mean just the idea of working with the two of them was just so appealing that it almost didn't matter what it was um I was like okay yeah let's let's try this let's see what happens uh and you know since then it's been like amazing like I, I don't think I've ever been happier um because you know I get to like play poker when I want uh and then I you know and then I also get the outlet of like getting to work with like my two best friends in this very collaborative sort of building thing where <clears throat> create all this cool stuff. We do exactly what we want to do. We get to connect right to you know to you guys to the users, um, and you know, like let, let's say on one end of the spectrum there's sort of that, and on the other end of the spectrum it's like I go back to school for finance, and then I go work on Wall Street for two years, and then I find out that like I'm miserable. I don't like the people I'm working with, or you know whatever. Um, that that's like that's like a huge risk. Whereas like what I'm doing right now is like essentially risk free. Um, in that, like, I, you know, I just wake up every day and love life. Um, and I think, you know, that's really, uh, you know, that's really what it's all about. And, like, even if I could go work on Wall Street and make, like, ten times the amount of money, and I knew that for sure, I still wouldn't do it because of just how great I have everything right now. Um, so, yeah, I guess that's sort of, like, the message I want to impart is that if you, do, if you make it about, if you ever make it about the money, I think you're just, like, setting, unless, like, you're, ah, <laughs> Scrooge McDuck, you're probably just setting yourself up to fail. Um, but if you make it about loving every day and enjoying the process, uh, like it's hard to, I think it's hard to fail. It's hard not to succeed. Um, so, you know, for the, you guys that I, in the, on some level are unsure about whether or not you should play poker. I think like if you just are, you're just fucking a dick, you just love that shit. Um, and you know, whatever else is going like, whether you're in school or you have a job or whatever, like, I think if you have the opportunity, and, like, again, you know, don't, like, if you're, if you're playing 25 and now, maybe, like, I mean, like, if you if you can find a place to live and you can live cheaply, sure, go for it. But try to, you know, get yourself, like, a fair shot, you know, get yourself, like, enough of a bankroll and, like, you know, your expenses and sort of whatever uh, to where you can take, I don't know, anywhere from, like, three months to a year. Um, and give yourself a real shot to just you know, do nothing but poker and just, and, and really nothing but love your life. And then, you know, who knows after that three months or a year, you know, you might have been working as an accountant, an accountant, and then started playing poker. And then, I don't know, like on your off times, you go hang out on the beach and then you go to the fucking harbor and you find out that boats are fucking dope and you love like building boats or like, I don't know, whatever, like designing boats. I have no idea. Um, uh, I, 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 I just think if you start going where it, it feels right, I just think the universe in a really, like, weird, serendipitous way just sort of comes to you. Uh, so, yeah, that's what, uh, you know, that's what sort of I would advocate. Anyway, so that's sort of my story, my emotional journey in poker. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, ask me. I would say the best place to find me is um, on Twitter, Fees88, or on Snapchat, Fees123. And... Um, I would also I also kind of want to make this like a like a a series of some kind where if you have sort of like, like what is poker to you like how do you fit in poker why are you here what are you doing what were you doing before it like have you know have you like are you moving towards something else are you doing something else um, I think that you know I think that my story is obviously really cool to tell um, uh, <clears throat> because because like it's it's been you know it's a story where like where I was able to find happiness. But I think that there's other people that also have really dope stories that they're, it's not like they, you know, they made all this money and they're like a high stakes crusher, but like they do their thing in poker and, you know, they have a great time um, and, and they make it work for them. So if that sounds like you and you think you have a story to tell, uh, I would love to hear it. So yeah, just, just hit me up um, on social media 
or yeah, just hit me up. Is there another way to hit me up? I guess you can, I guess you can find me on Facebook too. I think I'm just Ryan P on Facebook. Um, and yeah, send me a message and you know, I would sort of love to chat, uh, chat with you. Anyway, thanks for watching, listening to, uh, the day I chose happiness and hopefully I'll talk to you soon.